Welcome back guys, it's craft time. More specifically, it's fall at Dollar Tree time. Let's go ahead and get started. For most of us, it's still about 100 degrees outside. <laughs> However, Dollar Tree has started putting out some of their fall items and I just wanted to give you guys a little taste of what you guys could do with those items because I do know that they go quick. I went there and picked up a, a little haul um, got all kinds of stuff and I'm just gonna pick out a few of these items to flip for you guys or you know do my own little DIYs show you how I do them so that if you're interested you can give it a try if not hopefully we can just inspire you the first thing I'm gonna start with are these leaves they're self standing leaves they are very thick I really really like these I'm just not a big fan of the design on the front and the letters um, you can barely see them there's just too much going on so I'm and I'm going to start by removing the price tag and then sometimes the front will come off like that little paper design that they have on there. Sometimes those peel off really easily. Other times they just um, rip and cause problems. So what I like to do is kind of test the corner and see if it's going to come off easily or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, I leave it so that I don't mess up what will now be the back of my um, product and I do sand it down if it gets any of those like rough paper edges and then as far as removing the tag I always find that Dollar Tree's tags are super sticky and hard to get off so this is what has worked for me I know it's kind of weird but this is what I do I take a paper towel with some alcohol so I, I peel off the tag first um, sometimes I heat it with my heat gun and that helps release you know it reheats that adhesive but it also reactivates and makes it sticky. So I get that off of there. I take a paper towel with some alcohol on it and I just rub it all over. Basically just getting a good soak on all of that adhesive. And then I take the dry part of the paper towel um, or usually if you don't have a sanding block, that's why I said the dry part of the paper towel, my sanding block, which is already kind of dirty and dusty. And I just sand all over that area. And what I'm doing is, is putting dust all in that adhesive. Basically, you know, it's sticking to it. And then I take my little window scraper and scrape all of that off. And it comes off so much easier because it's not sticky anymore because of all of the dust. And it typically takes two rounds. So I get that first layer off. I do it again. I do the alcohol. I do the sanding block. And then I do um, the razor and it gets all of it off. That leaves me with a nice flat surface without any adhesive or anything on it because sometimes that adhesive block will show up through your paint and that's the last thing that you want to happen. Once I've got it all cleaned off, I am gonna go in with Waverly Moss. It is a chalk paint. I typically water down my chalk paints to make them go on a lot smoother, but I am going full force with this one. I only wanna have to paint this thing once without you know, just doing some touch-ups. So with all of those crevices with the leaves and stuff, it would take too long to have to do multiple coats on it. So I'm just going in with a thick coat and doing all of those edges. I'm going to be painting the front and the back. I like to do this with all of my pieces. If you're just doing it for yourself at home, you can get away with it. But even if it's a piece for myself at home, I like my backs to look just as good as my front. I don't want somebody to pick something up and be like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And then be like, oh, so I just do the whole thing. It doesn't take you that much longer. I highly suggest you do it, especially if you plan to sell any of the items you make. Please do not try to resell any of the stuff that you make with a gross, ugly back or the back still showing that you flipped this item. It is very cringy and just please, please don't do it. <laughs> After I have painted these up, I am going to be mod, po mod podging on some napkins. Now I did buy four of them. I wasn't really sure if I was going to originally do like the word fall, so F-A-L-L -L on each, each piece, but I did know I wanted to decoupage on it using some of these pumpkin napkins that I picked up last year, I believe from Walmart, but I'm, I don't know. But napkins, tissue paper, all of that stuff worked really, really great. So what I'm going to do is just kind of place them out how I want them to be. The one thing I did want to do was kind of make my leaves look like they're tumbling. I don't want them all to stand the exact same way. So I'm going to go ahead and set those up, kind of see how they fit next to each other. You know, it, it turned in different angles because they do self stand on all of the edges and find how they fit kind of the best. And then I'm going to lay out 
my napkins, kind of cut out what I want, remove the parts that I don't want, lay it out, get an idea of what it's going to look like, and I'm going to Mod Podge that on. If you are using napkins, you want to separate. There's typically two layers, and you want to separate that front layer from the back layer. So you just kind of um, peel the edges back and very carefully remove, like separate them and remove that back, and you don't need that for anything. And then that makes it thinner, and if you forget that, you'll know because when you go to um, adhere it down, you'll kind of start getting some wrinkles where they're starting to separate and cause problems. I actually did that on one of these and was able to catch it. I'm going to be using Mod Podge today to put these down. So all you're going to do is do a nice even layer all over the surface of where your picture will be going. You're going to lay it flat and smooth out all of the surfaces. Now if you put down a lot of the Mod Podge, it might soak into that napkin really quick. Make sure you're using just like some saran wrap or a piece of plastic or something to kind of rub that out so it's not catching on your fingers. And just smooth out any wrinkles, make sure it's laying nice and flat, and then you're going to put a, a second coat right on top of that. Make sure you get your edges really good, set it aside, and let it dry. I did this for each piece, and then typically when I do Mod Podge, I always do the entire surface of whatever I'm doing. For some reason, I didn't do that this time, and I have regrets. So I'm probably going to end up going back over the entire surface with Mod Podge, and the reason I'm saying that is because it leaves it a different sheen. So it's like you can tell where I stopped and where, like where the Mod Podge stopped and started, and I hate that. So I'm probably going to go back in and fix that at a later time, but just for the video's sake, I went ahead and moved forward after I realized. But just my suggestion to you, do the entire face of it so that you can't tell where it stopped and started. Once it's dry, which you can use a heat gun to help speed up this process, I'm just going to trim away any of the large excess and then make slits in between the leaves, like the different areas of the leaves, so that when I take my sanding block, I'm not ripping anything or pulling anything that shouldn't be. You want to make sure it's fully dry before you do this, but then you can just take your sanding block or a piece of sandpaper and you just kind of sand down in a downward motion. I like to go in a downward slash diagonal motion very gently. And what it will do is it will perforate that edge and you can peel it right off. It will fit whatever shape you have perfectly and it's very, very easy to do. I'm very happy with how the Mod Podge turned out, but I did use chalk paint on these. So now we have to seal this. I'm going to be using polycrylic. You can definitely still use Mod Podge for the entire thing. I just like my polycrylic because it dries so much faster. I did that on the entire front, back, and sides, and that is all I'm going to do with these. I still could add the letters on there, but I love the way that they turned out. In this case, I feel like less is more. I think that the colors and everything just kind of goes really well together. I personally like this for my taste, but like I said, you can always add letters on if you want. You can pick up the poster board stickers that they have there. You can pick up the wood letters, which actually I was looking for. I couldn't find any at my store, but um, the wood letters, if you have a Cricut, you can add Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut and you can't find any of that stuff, go on your, your computer, spell out the word to the size and everything that you need, print it out and use a piece of carbon paper to transfer that on and then you can just paint it on. There are so many options for you if you don't happen to have the exact materials that someone else might have. Let me know how you think these turned out below. If you think I should have added the letters on there just to give it a little extra step. Would love to hear what your advice is and if you are going to give this a try. I hadn't seen these leaves before. I love them. I don't know, you can do all kinds of different colors. There's just so many things that you can do. If you did want it to be like a, a monogram, have your initial on it or whatever, I would still suggest you painting it up and changing it up and then putting it on because it just takes away that cheaper feel um, that you get with the Dollar Tree stick on that they just put on there. So that's what I did with the leaves. And now we're going to move on to this little coffee cup. I picked up several of these. I have the little um, like cappuccino cup too. I'm going to do something with that at a later date, but I'm just going to use this little coffee cup and give it a new look and kind of freshen it up. I did the exact same steps to prep it as I did before with the leaves, and then I'm going to give it a good paint job. I'm going to be using this like this bright red and this barn red, just acrylic paints. 
mixing them up to the tone that I want. And if you don't know what I'm going for here, I'm going for that classic red cup that signals that it is holiday season um, at Starbucks and it just lets us know that the pumpkin is back and that the holiday season is upon us. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm just gonna paint up the entire cup and get it really good and covered with the acrylic paint. It doesn't cover near as well. So I did have to do three to four coats just to make sure I couldn't see anything through there. And then I'm gonna move on to paint on a lid. For the lid, I'm just using some white acrylic paint and then I'm going to take a little bit of a brown and mix it in there. I mean, just the tightest, like the tiniest bit to do like an off white. And I'm going to add some detail into the lid and I'm just going to let that dry. My plan for the next part, like if you really are going for a Starbucks cup, you can definitely do the logo and do all of that. Um, I plan to just put this in my booth so I don't want to have any copyright issues. So I'm not going to do any of that. What I'm going to do is take some of this drawer liner that uh, I just have extra from like our kitchen drawers and it's a nice like cream color. I'm gonna cut that down and make the little sleeve that goes over the cup. I'm just gonna cut it down to size. I'm gonna wrap it all the way around the back just to make sure the front and the sides are covered so if you see it at an angle, you can see it from any of those angles and it still looks good. And then I'm gonna hot glue it down. Once that's in place, I'm going to kind of spruce it up a little bit. I have this small piece of buffalo check ribbon. Literally, it's my last piece that I have, so I'm going to wrap that around there. Um, looking back, I do wish I would use a thicker one so that you could see it a little better, but that's okay. So I'm going to wrap it around, hot glue that into the back. I'm going to use some of the jute from Dollar Tree, wrap it around, tie it into, um, I'm not going to call it a bow, just tie it off. And then I'm gonna cut little strings of that and add those on there just to kind of make it a little, I don't know, give it a little more um, interest. And then I'm going to be using a bit of that same contact or drawer liner and making a little bow. For the bow, I'm literally gonna cut out a small rectangle around the size that I think I want to. I'm gonna crease it in the middle and this stuff holds its shape really well. So it makes a really pretty like little sides of the bow. I'm gonna wrap some twine around that, tie it in place, and hot glue that down. I did end up trimming it down to be a little bit smaller um, because it was a little bigger than what originally I thought I needed. And that's all I'm gonna do with this cup. It's super cute. You can definitely add on, you know, they have all kinds of like little gift ta tags and things. Add on like a little gift tag with someone's name if you wanna give it to them, um, you know, cause your coffee cups typically come with your name on them. You can definitely personalize it. Like I said, this one's just gonna be put into my booth, so I wanted to keep it general, but I love this little cup. I do think it gives me more like Christmas vibes than fall vibes, but like I said, we all look for that red cup coming out in the fall, so that's what I decided to do with this coffee cup. Loved it. We'll have you guys let me know what your idea for this coffee cup would be, what you would do differently for me, and if you think I did a good job, down in the comments below. The last project that I'm going to be doing for you in this video is kind of a mashup of several items that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have their little fall signs back that have the, um, the jute with the beads on them. Sorry, my words. The wooden beads on them. Um, they're super cute and I'm going to pick up two of those. I'm going to pick up two of their metal um, like little tin signs and I'm going to pick up some of their laser cut out owls. I'm gonna start with that sign and I'm going to go ahead and use some chalk paint and cover the face of it. They had a bunch of like, I don't know, it looks like dirt or like something would come out of it, but it's like speckles all over that I don't think was meant to be there. So I went ahead and painted those up to get a nice clean, fresh look. I used chalk paint because it covers really well and I only had to do two coats on this to get everything to cover and make sure that the words weren't showing through. Now this is kind of like a plastic background and it's textured, which I actually really like. It's almost like little twigs or something. Um, so I was trying not to fill that in too much to where it would take that away, but I thought that was really cute and kind of a neat touch. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some Waverly antiquing wax on the wooden beads and the frame. So I took the jute piece off. I just kind of pulled it off. I've removed the staples from the back 
and I just laid those down and I am going to give those a nice um, coat of, of this Waverly Antiquing Wax, which is basically like a stain. Uh, and then I'm going to use that on the frame too. Now, mind you, the frame is not wood, so it's kind of got like this plastic coating over it. I, you just have to be really careful if you're doing this. I would suggest maybe paint if you're not comfortable because the wax kind of just slides around and doesn't really stick until it's fully dry. So what I did was put it on there, let it dry for a little bit, it would start to beat up, and then I would smooth it back out, and that's what made it kind of stay and give that smooth look. And I did that for both pieces. Once that's dry, I'm ready to add my little owl into the middle. So I just picked out the ones that I like best from this package. These are super cute. They have other shapes. They have hearts and birds and probably something else that I've missed, but I'm going to put these literally right in the center and they're going to be what our picture is made of. So I just used some hot glue. You want to be careful. You can see the hot glue through there, um, but you have to put enough to get them to stick. Now I will say after the fact, I think the reason I was having a hard time with them sticking is because they were, they have a lot of residue on them. I assume from the laser, um, like you can see how dirty my hands are. I can literally rub it on my skin and a bunch of stuff comes off. So I think that's why maybe it wasn't sticking very well is because you need to wipe those off first and try to get that layer. Uh, I just didn't realize what was happening, but I did end up getting them to stick down. I tried to center them the best I could, but kind of in a hurry um, to make sure the hot glue didn't dry fast was kind of stressing me out a little. But once I was done with that, I wanted to attach these little frames to the tin. Now, you can definitely try to glue these together if you're keeping them for yourself, that would work. I'm sure with some hot glue and some E6000, you can make that happen. I want to put these in my booth, so I'm going to be getting out my drill and connecting them with a screw. So what I need to do first is line it up, find the middle, measure where I need my holes to be, and then I'm gonna go from there. I'm going to use a drill bit that is slightly larger than the screw that I'm using, which I needed to use slightly smaller screws because I'm scared what was going to happen is that they were going to split when I would put the screw through. But I didn't have ones that were long enough any skinnier than the ones I found. So I went ahead and forward with it. I found where I needed and then I was trying to be mindful that I want the screw to inlay into the little like zigzag so that it's not sticking out further than the tin and scratching someone's wall. So I put the hole right in the middle of like one of those down, like it, right in the middle of one of those folds. Sorry, I don't really know what to call it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I just kind of measured out, made a dot, put my, made my hole in there. And then from there, I lined it back up, got it centered where I wanted it to, made another mark. And then I took a drill but that was smaller than what my screw is. And I drilled a pilot hole. Now, if you're doing this and you're not comfortable with this, just make sure that you're not going all the way through your project. You want to be very careful because you don't want to poke a hole through. So I just did a pilot hole. I lined it back up and I screwed it together. Make sure that you're doing, you know, the the drill bit with that divot, it helps a lot to kind of hold it in place because when you are drilling metal or tin, it can kind of slide around on you. So just be very careful. What I did was take two um, things of masking tape so that I could have pressure on every side, but also the drill bit could go through without hitting anything. And that really helped me control it. Um, but the sliding around did kind of get my holes off center. So I kind of had to make one of the signs work. It's still slightly crooked, but it's it's good enough. Um, but yeah, I did that for both signs. Now on my second sign, um, when I was drilling my screw in, you know, the first one, I really took my time Well, I sped up a little too much and I did crack the front slightly, which is annoying, but thankfully it wasn't too bad. I just took some of the Dollar Tree spackling and I filled that in, took the Waverly wax right back over it and kind of hid that blemish. Thankfully that has like that faux wood grain in it and you can't really tell. I attached the um, the jute with the beads back to the metal sign so that it will be hung from there. And that is all I'm doing for this project. I think these are super cute. I think that I can definitely execute better if I were to try it again now that I kind of know what I'm doing. But I absolutely love these. I love that I could take all of these different items and mash them up together to create something unique. Um, 
I personally haven't seen anyone else do this, so I'm very excited with how it turned out, and I hope that it inspires you guys to give it a try too. I would love to hear which of these projects you guys like the best, like which transformation do you like the best, which ones will you give a try, and if you do give them a try, consider going to my Facebook page. I made a group where we can all share our projects and communicate and just kind of share a community that will inspire each other and get to show off our projects and our creativity. So that link is in my description. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I do plan on giving you guys some more Dollar Tree fall videos here in the near future. But for now, like I said, just a few items to give you a little taste of it. But if you're in the need for more, I do have several other videos from last fall that still have great projects that you can give a try. I will um, link those in the description and I will tag them on the end of this video. So if you want to give it a give it a shot or check out what else I have for you, you can find it there. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, consider subscribing to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.